Hi, good one. Welcome. Thank you, Nina. Good morning. There have been some market jitters about the financial health of Chinese property developers, rumors about Chinese banks stop lending to them. What's your feeling about the overall financial health of Chinese property developers? I think along with the in, in China we always say you have to go along with the main the government's policy. The government policy is actually to promote a steady growth in the housing sector. So every time when the market goes up too much, they do put the brakes on and try to actually slow the market down. And we are in that period where the government is trying to take away excess liquidity in the market so that prices may correct or slow down. So I think for residential, I would say there's probably more chance of correction in tier one city versus tier two, tier three. How big a correction do you see? I would say probably some of the high end residential in Shanghai, Beijing in particular, the corrects by 10% is probably not excessive. How about commercial property? Are you less concerned here? I'm much less concerned about commercial sector because commercial sector, especially if you look at Shanghai and Beijing in particular, um, everyone know with the size of the Chinese economy and its continued growth, Shanghai and Beijing in particular will join those global gateway cities, we call it, where liquidity from around the world all want to put the capital to work. In terms of office sector, probably in the big tier two cities like Chengdu, like Nanjing, correction is less, but I would still think a 10%, 15% correction is not out of the question. Now let's move on to Gao Capital. Tell us a little bit about your firm. Well, it's, uh, it's actually started in US in the mid 90s. So the very first transaction I, I put together at that time was the hotel called Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which actually happened to be the site of the first Oscar in 1928. It was bankrupt, so I was a bit young, naive, so I, I thought, um, I'm not afraid, I can make it happen. So we bought it for almost nothing, fixed it, and fortunately we were able to turn it into where all the movie stars and, and celebrities hang out these days. Then, then I saw the correction in Hong Kong in 2000, 2001. SARS happened. And I thought, finally, I think it's an opportunity to play in Hong Kong and China. So you've raised four funds in total. How much did you raise and which year were they raised? Uh, the China funds were, 05 was 200 million. That was fund number one when we first started. And then 07 was 800 million. 09 was uh, 430 million. And then um, last year was fund four, which was just over a billion dollars. We actually have four funds in US and three funds in Europe also for UK market. Your first fund was raised in 2005. What is the status of that fund? Fund one is fully exited. Okay. Uh, in fact, the last remaining asset, we had a joint venture with Swire Properties on, on the Sanitun, village of Sanitun. Uh, so they, they just uh, purchased our stake. So we, uh, that's our last investment in fund one. Did you make your investors happy? Yes, Fund 1 finished, I think, in the mid to high 20s, IRL, uh, I forgot, 2.3 to 2.5 times multiple on what we originally invested. So it's a good result. Do you have a performance benchmark? We try to generate about 20% targeted return on an annualized IRL basis. So depending on the length, right? So that means net of fees will be anywhere from 15% to 17%. If we hit 20, hopefully we, we in some cases can go better than 20, as we have done in fund one. Um, and I think our fund three will do very, very well as well, as things stand. What are some usual ways for you to exit your investment in China? In, in very ways, right? We, in our China portfolio, we have sold to local developers. We have sold to public companies. Um, we haven't done a REIT yet. We have considered doing a REIT, and I think that will be a highly viable exit in the very near future. Because I, I actually am convinced the government and the people behind the government are quite smart, and they understand that in order to smooth out the, the volatility in the housing market, in particular in China, they need to offer more alternative investment channel for people to put their money. But first of all, the government has to want it. If they do want it, I think then they will set the right framework for REITs to become uh, a viable product. And then it's up to REIT managers to then introduce them to the public and gain confidence of the public that they actually do appreciate alongside with the market, but at the same time they offer a good return uh, on a, in the form of dividend. 
Well, Goodwin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.